Okay, now we have Sheriff Carter candidates. And same routine, five minutes to introduce yourself and make your speech. Good evening, thank you very much for being here tonight. My name is Chris Saxon and I want to be your next sheriff. I've got over 30 years of law enforcement experience. Wow, that sounds loud. Am I being loud? No. Okay. Maybe I should turn this down a little. There we go. 28 years has been with the California Highway Patrol. Five years with the Trinity Courts as a Deputy Marshal. And I started my law enforcement career in 1983 when I attended the CHP Academy in Sacramento. Graduated, went down to Los Angeles where I worked patrol for several years before promoting to sergeant uh, where I was a field sergeant, worked patrol uh, shifts most of graveyards. Uh, then I took over all the training responsibilities for officer safety training for the Southern Division Office, um, as well as the uh, uh, commercial enforcement operations for training and, uh, and monitoring and supervising the, uh, the guys who drive the pickup trucks around that stop all the trucks. Uh, Went up to headquarters, I was asked to go up there and take over the statewide recruitment efforts. Uh, so I was in charge of recruitment for every entry level classification for the Highway Patrol, which included working with the State Personnel Board and Department of Personnel Administration. Uh, I also was trained in discrimination complaint investigations, and I taught sexual harassment, sex discrimination prevention at the CHP Academy for cadets, officers, and sergeants. I promoted the lieutenant. I uh, went down to uh, San Jose, where I was a field operations officer in charge of about 90 employees there, officers, sergeants, auto techs, and janitors. Uh, what I did there was uh, manage fleet operations, uh, citizens' complaints, internal investigations, deployments, scheduling, uh, grant funds for, uh, for the operations going on there, and special events as well. I transferred to Oakland, performed the uh, same operations there before going back to Sacramento where I went to the Office of Special Projects. There I managed the entire CHP grants program. Uh, for every grant money that came in from the federal government and, uh, and other entities went through my office. We evaluated all of the different grant uh, applications. We parsed out the money to different areas where they had a need for specific operations. We did follow up on that and then I made presentations back to the Office of Traffic Safety and the National Highway Transportation Administration. I also ran the California Motorcycle Safety Program, and I was liaison to the Capitol for the Highway Patrol uh, at the uh, Governor's Policy Council on Alcohol and Drug Abuse, uh, the Juvenile Justice Commission, and the uh, Criminal Justice and Planning. 1998, I had the opportunity to test and apply for the position of commander of the CHP office in Weaverville, and I was selected, came up here, moved my family up here, and uh, stayed up here for about 10 years um, as a commander. Involved in various operations from deployments around the, uh, the county to managing the facility, grants, budgeting, um, and working uh, in uh, collaboration with the other agencies within Trinity County to ensure that the people were safe. Uh, after that, I went to Northern Division, which is the Reading Office, and I took over all the administrative operations for the 17 field commands from Sacramento up to the Oregon border. Uh, I monitored their grants, uh, their budgeting, overtime, fleet operations, I did evidence audits, and I also was in charge of all the training operations and uh, public in information. I promoted the captain and went to Hollister Gilroy, which is down in the Bay Area, and there uh, my uh, responsibility was all San Benito County and the southern part of Santa Clara County. So I networked with all the law enforcement agencies there um, and had a lot of grant programs that we did uh, joint with uh, Gilroy PD and with Hollister PD. I retired in 2011 and I took an honorable service retirement. And I say that because there's a rumor going around that I took a disability retirement and why am I doing this? Well, that's not true. It was an honorable service retirement and I got the certificate to approve it. <laughs> I spent the last year, uh, five years, as a deputy marshal working at the courthouse, uh, further protecting uh, the people that use that environment, as well as uh, serving uh, papers to uh, the people in the county, helping with evictions from time to time, and transport uh, occasionally from the, uh, the jail. So basically, you've got three choices for Sheriff Corner. All of us are post certified. We all have the basic, intermediate, and advanced post certificates. Um, we all have patrol experience. 
I chose to move up the ranks for, to sergeant, lieutenant, captain in patrol and administrative assignments. I've been an instructor at CHP Academy and Coastal Division. Uh, some of my specialized training includes ethic and law enforcement, police auditing, civil liability, and I had the opportunity to attend UC Davis Executive Management course. So I have the knowledge, skills, and desire to lead the Sheriff's Department, and I'd appreciate your vote on June 5th. Thank you, Good evening, everybody. My, I'm Mark Potts. I'm currently a Deputy Sheriff at the, at the Sheriff's Office. Uh, I'm going to keep it short tonight. I'm going to give you a laundry list of my training certifications. It's quite lengthy. Um, I started uh, career in the military in 1975, served 23 years in that capacity, and upon the completion of that career, I started uh, at, shortly thereafter here at the Trinity County Sheriff's Office. I've uh, been there for nearly 20, just about 20 years now. Uh, worked in several divisions, uh, narcotics division, patrol division, and uh, in jail division. And uh, my, uh, I'm just going to give you my uh, three major platform planks. Uh, there are other things that need to be done, but my major planks are, are, are as follows. Uh, restoration of your property rights pursuant to the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution, and uh, budgeting for new deputies, uh, although my methodology is quite uh, different from my opponents. And uh, until we do get more deputies to, sh to, to help in these outlying areas, I've uh, been forming a posse. I've got over 400 people now that are volunteers that are going to get out and, and help shore up some of the deficiencies, primarily out in the outlying areas, although we do have shortages in Rebuild Hay Fork, as most people know, we don't have 24-hour coverage, and that's when a lot of the malfeasance occurs. So I look forward to your questions. Good evening, everyone. I think I know pretty much everybody here. Um, if you don't, I'm from Trinity County. I was born here in 1959. Uh, wow, just a long history with family. Starting back in the 1800s, um, I've worked in our sawmills, I've worked in our grocery stores, other businesses around the county. Uh, I started working for the Sheriff's Office in 1997, uh, I was on patrol for 15 years. 14 of those years I was a field training officer where I trained dozens of officers that come through the Sheriff's Office. Uh, currently I'm a corporal in charge of managing the uh, Marijuana Code Enforcement Program. Uh, some of my training, uh, eight years in the United States Coast Guard. Uh, uh, SWAT trained. I'm the current sniper for the Sheriff's Office. Uh, I'm trained in drug endangered children investigations, active shooter training. Uh, on those lines, uh, I was just reading through a, one of my emails. I know that's on a lot of people's hearts and minds, this school shootings and stuff. And uh, anyway, I saw the, an email that I got yesterday that uh, for, I know we have trouble with, uh, you know, getting our guys out to trainings and stuff, but they have a course for uh, active shooter trainer so we can send one of our guys down to be a trainer for active shooter so we can do training within our own ranks so we don't have to send the whole department out somewhere to get trained. Um, I have uh, supervisory management training, investigator trained, I've got my advanced certificate. Uh, some of my plan points, uh, build lasting partnerships with our citizenry, uh, work with community organizations to pro proactively address growing concerns, uh, address employee retention and recruitment. I've got some good plans for that. Um, obtain funding for additional deputies, address the rising concerns for school safety, improve resp response time to calls for service, hold deputies accountable uh, for the community concerns, protect our watersheds from harmful pesticides. We know that's a huge issue these days. Um, address the homelessness and related, related issues um, and help build the Sheriff's Auxiliary to be, be an extension of the Sheriff's Office, which we've been working pretty uh, diligently on lately. Uh, we're getting more cars, more people. We're going to 
here in the near future we're going to do some more recruitment for additional uh, posse members or uh, yeah. <laughs> Auxiliary. <laughs> Auxiliary members. Uh, all right, so um, just a little something here. Um, it is my desire to be a sheriff for the people, a, a proactive sheriff, a sheriff that is willing to continue working in the field, a sheriff that will lead from the front lines, a sheriff that will stay in touch with the community and will remain ever vigilant and stay an active uh, part of each community. As Sheriff, I will protect and defend our Second Amendment right. I will continue to work with local and state agencies to combat our county's environmental issues. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. I got one more little thing here I wanted to pass on to you guys. Um, you know, what it comes down to um, you know, you, you, you people are the ones that are going to elect me as your sheriff. And so being your sheriff, I want to do um, what you would have me do as your sheriff. Uh, that's what I'm about. I'm about the communities. I'm about the people. I'm about fixing things that are in our, that's broken in our county. Um, so staying in touch with the communities, I know what you guys need and then I can fix those issues. Um, I think I'm done. Okay. <laughs> We're on <in> time. <laughs>
Well, I, like I mentioned earlier, um, I've worked under three sheriffs here in Trinity County. Um, what I'm going to do different is I'm going to be a working sheriff. I'm going to be out there with the guys, helping them do their job. That builds morale when you're out there with the guys. I built a lot of experience um, to lead these guys. They chose me to be their sniper. That shows a lot of trust uh, to pick me to be their sniper. What was the second part of that? Are you better than the guys that you're running against? Oh, uh, the, <laughs> well, I've I've got more years in the sheriff's office experience than either one of them, so um, that makes me the better candidate because I have more training and experience within the sheriff's office than the other two. My family and I have lived in Trinity County for 20 years. We're not going to be moving anywhere out of state. We're here. This is where we're going to end up. So number one, that's how I, I think I can better serve the, the people of Trinity County. Um, number two, my experience, uh, I think, prepares me better for this position than my two opponents here. While great individuals, great officers, uh, great deputies, uh, they're wonderful at what they do, and I applaud them and I respect them for, for what they've done over the many years. Uh, but by going up through the ranks and by taking on ever increasing responsibilities, I think that better prepares me to assume a management role of the Sheriff's Department and a leadership role. I will be out in the field as well, but you've got to get the money in, into the, the coffers before you can get more people and you can get them out on the road. Okay, this is a three-part question, and I'm going to see if I can say it in a little different order that will make it flow better. Um, <clears throat> do you feel staffing is sufficient or needs to be increased? If increased staffing, what is your plan, and how do you plan on funding the sheriff's office? And we'll start with you. Um, no, staffing is not at a level what, that we need it. We definitely need to increase the number of deputies that we have. We need to increase the number of uh, uh, resident deputies that we have to reduce response times to your crimes that are reported. And a side effect of that is if we get more law enforcement out there, the crimes themselves will begin to diminish, which will make the public feel safer. Uh, my plan is to increase uh, uh, outside funding sources as much as possible and to build bridges with the Board of Supervisors and tack in with other department heads around the county who have access to outside funding sources that can improve the level of service that we can uh, uh, bring into the department, uh, such as through uh, Health and Human Services and, uh, and through the probation department. No, our staffing is woefully inadequate. It has been uh, in the near 20 years I've been here. It hasn't got better, it's actually gotten worse. We got uh, five less deputies now than we did when I started. <clears throat> yes, we can continue uh, seeking out grants. And that's what we've been doing for the 20 years I've been here. It hasn't worked out well. So I've come up with another plan, which is to uh, eliminate the California Highway Patrol uh, Trinity River Division and send that funding to the sheriff with which he can fund an additional, an additional 40 deputies, which would give us 24-hour coverage, get people out to, to resident positions and, and have 24-hour coverage in the entire county. Um, and the question number three is just answered in number two. <laughs> Okay, so, no, we are shorthanded. I mean, that's, that's just the way it is. Like Mark said, for the last 20 years, we've always been shorthanded. Um, we could always use more guys. Um, we're, working on, we're currently working on a plan. I'm going to try and get this in my time frame. Um, we're in the beginning stages of a uh, ballot measure uh, for local sales tax. Um, uh, let's see, the ballot measure is being written in such a way that the Board of Supervisors will not have the ability to regulate the funding. Um, the money will go directly to the Sheriff's Office. Uh, the Board uh, would not be able to supplant the general fund budget of the Sheriff's Office with that ballot measure funds. Uh, it'll, uh, what we want with this is to fund additional deputies 
uh, with this money is because that is guaranteed money. Um, and then uh, we want to put on a, a sunset clause on that so uh, you guys know what's going on. Okay, <clears throat> this one, I'm not sure really is a question for you all, but um, I'll let you give it a shot anyway. Let's start with that one. Yeah, what's the question? <laughs> 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 That's my answer to that. Yes. <laughs> I don't have much of a stance on cannabis one way or another. Uh, it's uh, protected by the Fourth Amendment, uh, if you ask me. It's, it shouldn't be policed in, in any way. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't uh, have really a stance. Um, that's what I do. That's my job is uh, marijuana code enforcement. I don't necessarily, personally, care what somebody smokes or don't smoke, so I don't really have a personal opinion about it. I just do my job, and that's code enforcement. Uh, I think I got all of it. I definitely believe in uh, medical cannabis for certain situations. Uh, there, we have a family member uh, back east that relies on medical cannabis and it, it definitely helps her out so much she can function, function day to day. Um, so I am in favor of medical cannabis. Uh, commercial wise, uh, the state has regulations on that. The county has adopted, adopted numerous ordinances on it to, uh, to regulate the industry. Um, there's a few people in the room I, I recognize as, as going through the process because I've seen you come into the courthouse and, and filling out your paperwork and paying your, uh, your fees. Um, so as long as the, uh, the ordinances are being followed, um, I have no problems at all with that. How will you protect the interests and property values of business and landowners affected by crime and blight? Well, the number, like I was saying before, uh, the increased number of deputies uh, on the road in and of itself will help deter crime. Just the visual effect of seeing a patrol vehicle going through your communities day in and day out uh, will make people think twice, as well as, as, well as the expansion of the Trinity uh, Sheriff's Auxiliary. Uh, they do a wonderful job. And to also uh, begin establishing neighborhood watch programs uh, with uh, definite input from the uh, Sheriff's Department as far as uh, some training and some things that you need to be doing. Uh, as far as protecting the property values, I think one thing we have to do is we have to get visitors and tourists and people back into Trinity County to come here and spend their money. If they leave here, they don't come back and they tell their friends that their car got broken into at the trailhead and now we've just lost a ton of money coming into this county. So that's uh, personal protection is, uh, is what I see as a way to get people back here and spend the money. Well, blight's not a function of the sheriff's office. Crime is, and I agree with Tim. You got to get more deputies out on the streets and and, and use uh, your civilian uh, friends in our communities as well to get people out there to to avert that crime. Okay, uh, they covered it well. Uh, not really, Dad. Next question, please. Okay. Um, how important is a good working relationship with other LEOs, I guess, such as Forest Service, Fish and Game, uh, and I guess California Highway Patrol, etc.? Well, it's very important. Uh, we rely on these other agencies to help us with uh, many different functions that we do. Uh, uh, the illegal marijuana grows out on the forest. Uh, we use the CHP's helicopter for search and rescue and uh, medical issues. Um, the fishing game, uh, it's up here, we're a small you know, community, small sheriff's department where we have to rely on each and every one from, of these people from these other agencies. It is 
it is huge. I mean, we, we couldn't survive without them. Uh, until we can get more deputies, and even then we would still continue to use these other agencies. Yes, it's important. We do it now. It goes both ways. We help them, they help us, and that'll continue. That's true. One thing that, uh, that I found is uh, being a member of management for CHP in Trinity County is the excellent working relationship that all these organizations bring to the people of the county. Uh, now, some people may not like it when they get pulled over by a fish and wildlife on the highway, and, uh, but, you know, it's, it's another uniform and a badge. When the call goes out for an emergency 911 call, I really don't think anybody cares what color the uniform is or what badge they're wearing. They just want some help there now. Um, so I'm a very big proponent of building kind of coalitions and working relationships with all the allied agencies. Um, yeah, and that's good. <laughs> okay, uh, can you explain the importance of the under sheriff position and talk a little bit about uh, your <coughs> qualifications for your under sheriff? Let's start with Mark. It's very important. He's your right-hand man. He's your executive officer. He carries. Uh, he does a bulk of the work for you. As a matter of fact, uh, in your absence, even or with your presence. Um, and as far as who my under sheriff is going to be, it's, that's going to remain confidential until such time as I feel that I need to release that information. Yes, uh, the under sheriff is a huge asset to the, the sheriff's office. Um, I feel that the under sheriff is, a, is the administrator. He takes care of all the jail functions. Um, he does the bulk of the administrative work in the sheriff's office. Uh, we also have a business manager that takes care of the, the budgetary issues. Um, and the sheriff basically just is an overseer of these, uh, these functions. And, uh, Lost my thought. <laughs> um, anyway, um, I'll get back to the under sheriff. My under sheriff is brilliant. Uh, he's got a dual uh, bachelor's degree. Uh, he's got a master's degree in public administration, and he'll be a huge asset to the sheriff's office. Who is he? I'll be Mr. Josh Ford. The under sheriff is the un unsung hero of the department who assists in planning, organizing, and directing all the operations of the Sheriff's Department under the Sheriff. Uh, so the Sheriff has to have a clear idea of what direction he wants the uh, organization to go in order to have the Under Sheriff fulfill those duties and, and ensure that, uh, that the, the Department is providing the highest level of public safety as possible. I selected Sergeant Brian Ward as my Under Sheriff uh, when you elect me, uh, come in a couple of weeks now. He's got over 17 years with the Sheriff's Department here. Prior to that, he was with the Oregon State uh, Correctional facility up, up there uh, as a guard. He's uh, performed functions in the uh, the jail uh, as well as uh, detectives and uh, narcotics. So uh, I feel he's very well qualified to, to take that over and uh, and assume that function. What can be done with the meth problem? It's everywhere. Uh, meth isn't new. It's been here for decades. When I first got here 20 years ago, I was one of the original members of the meth task force. Uh, community members and various uh, department heads from behavioral health and uh, health and human services that got together to try and address the problem. Uh, meth is just one, one more step into uh, the other drugs that we have coming into our schools. Predominantly now it's cocaine and heroin. They're making a huge appearance. And those things need to be addressed. And uh, I want to work with a school resource officer and get a juvenile probation officer teamed up again like we used to have to go into the schools to help, to help do that. But it's, a, it's an educational thing. It's not just enforcement. We've got to get out there and tell the people that this is some bad stuff and this stuff can kill you. Uh, as well as when they make it, it can blow up in your face. Well, we need to reprioritize. Right now, it's marijuana, 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 because those folks have assets that we can take through asset forfeiture and make it ours. All the, might, all the while, these, the tweakers, the heroin guys, the guys that are breaking into people's houses every night stealing their stuff, we don't have time to deal with them because we're out messing with marijuana because they got stuff we can take. And these crooks that are stealing your stuff, we don't have time to deal with them. We need to refocus our efforts. 
Yeah, I definitely agree with Mark on that issue. Um, yeah, we used to have funding for uh, dealing with uh, meth. Um, and I was talking to somebody the other day, it sounds like we may be um, getting some grant funding to address that issue again. Um, so that would be huge that we can assign uh, an officer specifically to address some of those uh, meth issues in the, and heroin issues in our communities uh, because it is everywhere. Um, so, you know, and it doesn't help that, you know, um, that they decriminalized it. So, you know, our hands are kind of tied. Um, you know, it's not a felony anymore, it's a misdemeanor. So, um, they've kicked all these people out of the prisons on uh, their uh, drug charges. So, you know, uh, we just still work at it and the best we can. Um, that's all we can do is just keep working at it. As sheriff, <clears throat> will you issue CCW permits to marijuana growers, domestic violence perps, and or drug users? That would be a no to uh, most of those. Uh, as far as the marijuana growers, um, I don't know how that's going to turn out in the future. Um, that question has come up a couple times. Um, the, sheriff's, uh, the sheriff's office is not issuing any CCWs to uh, people that are involved in the cannabis world, uh, but that may change in the future. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. As a proponent of constitutional carry, uh, yes, I would. I will follow the current policies that are in the Sheriff's Department now on issuing CCWs. Uh, Department of Justice says that if you're uh, convicted of domestic violence, you're a felon, or you have drug issues uh, and poor behavioral health issues, uh, you are not to be allowed to uh, have a CCW. Uh, you know, the Second Amendment, it, it Mark's a big proponent of that, so am I. But also, I temper that with the fact that the Supreme Court has uh, often upheld many of the, uh, the uh, laws dealing with uh, preventing those of the felon, uh, felonies or with uh, violent issues uh, being able to have a CCW or a firearm. This is a question we kind of touched on before, but it's from a little different angle. <clears throat> How do you plan to build working relationship with other law enforcement and community agencies? Mark. I don't know that we need to build anything. We're already working with other agencies. Yeah, uh, I'm just going to agree because we do. We work with them constantly, daily. Um, we don't uh, need to... I mean, if there's room for expansion, yeah, we'll take it, but no, we're doing good. We do have an excellent working relationship with many of the allied agencies that participate in operations in Trinity County. Uh, I want to build additional relationships with other department heads, such as with Health and Human Services, uh, the Director of uh, OES, the uh, Probation Department, uh, the courts, because they have alternate funding sources that by building those relationships, we can develop additional programs to get additional deputies here. They may have to work for a program for a little bit, but they're not going to be working that program eight to ten hours a day. Uh, so, uh, additionally, working with the uh, Board of Supervisors to uh, rebuild some of the bridges that have been allowed to be uh, destroyed over the last few years, um, I think it's very important to uh, also keep them more open to giving additional funding uh, through our general fund to the Sheriff's Department. This, this question is directly to you. Okay. What is your patrol experience in rural remote areas, most of Trinity? Uh, Mr. Saxon, what would your former CHP patrol officer say about you, you working with, about you working with you? I only have a minute for this. Uh, I've patrolled in, in rural environments, believe it or not, Los Angeles in the, the Malibu Canyon, uh, Mulholland Highway, uh, Canaan Dune Road. Uh, those are fairly uh, rural areas, as well as uh, I did patrol work in San Benito County because uh, we didn't always have an officer available to handle calls out there. Even as a captain, I wore a uniform, I had a gun belt, I qualified just like everybody else, and I would go out there and patrol as needed. 
my former employees, I think uh, if you bring it up, uh, I will tell you that there's probably two people that I think definitely would not want to uh, be working with me. And I can tell you about 30 others that had no problems working with me and appreciate the fact that I took uh, individuals on for disciplinary issues when it was warranted. Mr. Saxon, you're the only sheriff candidate not working in the department now. How would you address coming into the department to ensure continuity of staff and public protection? Well, that's a, the biggest reason why I wanted somebody from within the department as my undersheriff. Somebody could bri bridge the gap between the ideas that I want to bring in for public safety uh, and, and encourage the rest of the department to go along with that, that uh, program. I'm not coming in here to make this a highway patrol office. It's not, and I realize that. It never will be, and I don't want it to be because it's a different type of law enforcement that we're going to be providing to you, the public. But I have a lot of ideas that come from 30 years of experience working in different parts of the state and with the state level at the state capitol. There's a lot of ideas out there that can be brought into Trinity County to improve things. I'll be working side by side with the men and women of the Sheriff's Department who I feel are doing an outstanding opportunity, and I look forward to the, oper uh, the opportunity to lead them. Can I sit down now? Yes, Thank you. please. Please do. <laughs> What is your view on the Board of Supervisors' actions regarding Sanctuary County for Trinity, and how will you direct your deputies on enforcement? Yeah, um, I haven't looked at this issue for a little while, and I've kind of lost my, my thoughts on it. So um, the only thing I'm going to really say about it is, um, that uh, there are loopholes in the system that uh, uh, regarding uh, people that we arrest that are um, of illegal nature and um, you know if we post that as a public uh, posting you know if we, if, if we arrest somebody and I don't even, I'm going to just pass it to Mark because I, I got myself all along sidetracked on that deal. Well, it's not a huge issue for us now, or it shouldn't be. Uh, most of the illegals that we deal with are on the force on federal land. They shouldn't come to our lockup in the first place. If they're arrested on, on the federal land, they should go to a federal lockup, not our jail. Um, I suppose there could be instances where that what didn't happen and, and we got uh, come across them in our jurisdiction. In those cases, if they did come into our jail, then there's ways the uh, Orange County Sheriff down there kind of started a, a, a trend, and, and I like her policy, where we can put that out there and uh, we can do it without doing it. Senate Bill 54, signed by Governor Brown, uh, really impeded the opportunities of law enforcement to do their job, and that is protect the public. Uh, as far as sanctuary uh, county goes, the, the Board of Supervisors did not vote to have this a sanctuary county. They voted at that particular time not to join the list of making it a non-sanctuary county. They didn't vote for sanctuary county. They just did not pass a resolution to make it a non-sanctuary county. Uh, as far as, uh, you know, I, I'm going to agree with Mark on this one. Uh, when we arrest somebody, it's usually off the Forest Service and the feds are going to take them anyway. Um, the, the State Service Association said that, that this was one of the worst things that could ever happen to the people of California as far as uh, sheriffs uh, protecting the people in their counties that they serve. But the bottom line is, the sheriffs are not immigration police. Never have been, never will be. And, last question. <clears throat> What is your view of asset forfeiture as a policing tool? Would you advocate its increased use as an additional means to fund the sheriff's office? We'll let Mark start this one. No, I don't like asset forfeiture. It's uh, a perverse nature, a perverse uh, way of uh, policing. It's, it's policing for profit. And I alluded to it earlier. We're, we're dealing with, we're, we've got to focus on marijuana, marijuana, marijuana all day long because we can. Those people have assets that we can take and buy cars and guns and stuff. In the meantime, other people are running wild, stealing your stuff. These people over here haven't hurt anybody at all. Uh, so, no, it, it creates a perverse police incentive. I'm, I'm absolutely against asset forfeiture, except in, at least as in the way that we're doing it right now. 
As that for forfeiture is, um, it's kind of going away anyway on its own, um, from what I understand. Um, as far as using that money for funding officers, that's totally illegal. You cannot use asset forfeiture to for funding for um, officers. Uh, you can, we can use it for um, uh, buying equipment and things like that, but we cannot use it for hiring personnel. Originally, asset forfeiture was a valuable tool that, uh, that law enforcement was able to use. I think it's been overused in a lot of instances. Uh, I think there needs to be uh, control over it. I think in Trinity County, the sheriff will be the one that maintains control over that and how, what, how in depth asset forfeiture is. I think I still think it's a valuable tool for uh, preventing, say, cartels from having their illegal, ill-gotten gains uh, transferred out of here. Uh, it's not just marijuana, though. It's also cocaine, heroin, uh, various other drugs that are being transported that can be uh, subject to asset forfeiture. Uh, it, the funds can be used for training for equipment. Uh, they cannot be used for funding personnel. Uh, but I think it's a valuable tool if used properly. Okay, thank you. Let's have a hand for these gentlemen. yourselves for being a great audience. Come on. Let's hear it. Thank you all for coming. It's been fun.